What's up, NFL fans? Welcome back to the channel. We just talk sports. I am back again with my weekly NFL picks for week eight. We got over 60% of spread picks correct and hit both teaser parlays this week. Let's try to find identify those trends and see if we can duplicate our success in week eight over to week nine. So with the first game we have Denver Broncos versus the Baltimore Ravens. This is going to be a very close matchup. The Broncos have a very elite defense. The Ravens defense is a bit suspect, especially in the passing game. The Ravens have yet to cover the spread of eight points or more. They're 0-2 against AFC West teams and 0-2 against the spread against AFC West teams. So until the Ravens can prove that they can win a game as an eight-point favorite, and cover these kind of spreads this season. Give me the Denver Broncos at plus nine and a half. I think they have a very stout defense that can stop and three and out this Baltimore Ravens. I can't see Bo Nix airing it out against this Baltimore Ravens pass defense, but I think this will be a close game. Even if the Broncos do not get a shocking upset, I can see them being within this nine and a half since the Ravens have yet to cover the spread this year. Give me the Broncos plus nine and a half. Miami Dolphins versus the Buffalo Bills. The Miami Dolphins lost to the Arizona Cardinals, and the Buffalo Bills are coming back home after a cross-country row game against the Seattle Seahawks. The Buffalo Bills own the Miami Dolphins, so I feel comfortable getting this minus six against this Miami Dolphins team. I think this Bills team can beat this team by a touchdown or more. This offense is pretty explosive with Amari Cooper and don't know how I feel about this Dolphins team just yet with Tua coming back. So the Bills on Miami Dolphins, give me the Bills minus six. Washington Commanders versus the New York Giants. The Commanders had a nice Hail Mary win against the Chicago Bears and the Giants are continuing to giant this year. Um, the spread right now is at four. I like the commanders at minus four. The New York Giants have a hard time with passing touchdowns at MetLife Stadium, and you're going to have to score touchdowns in a game to win games. This may be a close one at first, but I see the commanders trailing away in the second half since the Giants will probably struggle to score touchdowns. Give me the commanders minus four. Las Vegas Raiders versus the Cincinnati Bengals. The Raiders lost to the Rams, and the Bengals lose to the Philadelphia Eagles. Right now, the spread is at seven. The Cincinnati Bengals are winless at home, so I can see a potential upset with the Raiders. Don't see it happening, but then I feel like this seven is a bit too rich for a team that has yet to win at home. This is going to be a part of a teaser parlay that I have for this weekend. So I'm going to tease the Cincinnati Bengals from a minus seven down to a minus four. I think I feel a bit more comfortable of this Bengals team covering a spread under two field goals against the Raiders than I do with a touchdown. So give me the Cincinnati Bengals minus four, and then we're going to tag that with another team later on in the video. Dallas Cowboys versus the Atlanta Falcons. The Dallas Cowboys are on a two-game losing streak, and the Atlanta Falcons in their past two games, they're one and one. The Falcons have been looking really explosive, especially against the Buccaneers and the Panthers. So although they've had some explosive moments, they've gone against either a subpar team or a team that does not have great defense, and the Cowboys have gone through hard competition. They had the Steelers, the Lions, and now San Fran. I think this game will be a lot closer than what people think. This is a type of game where I see the public going all over Atlanta because Atlanta won and the Cowboys are on a losing streak. I can see people going towards the Atlanta way. I'm going to go Dallas Cowboys way. I think we can see a potential upset in this game. Um, I think this will be a very high scoring game. Don't know if I feel comfortable taking the Cowboys plus three and a half. So for me, it's either upset money line or um, tease the spread. I'm going to tease the spread for the Dallas Cowboys. Right now, they're at plus three and a half. I'm going to tag on six points. So I'm going to have the Dallas Cowboys at plus nine and a half. A lot of these Falcons games have been down to one possession, very close games. And I can see Dak and Prescott having their moments against this Falcons defense. If Baker threw for 330 without Mike Evans and Chris Godwin, who knows what could happen with Dak Prescott and CeeDee Lamb. So I do like a high scoring game and I like the Cowboys to at least cover this plus nine and a half that I will tag to a different game that I have in this video. 
LA Chargers versus the Cleveland Browns. The Chargers have a very nice stout defense, very run heavy type team. And the Cleveland Browns had a nice victory over the Baltimore Ravens. Honestly, this Browns team looks very explosive with Jameis Winston at quarterback than they do with Deshaun Watson. But then again, the Chargers defense is no more, is nowhere as bad as the Ravens defense. So I think this could be a close game, but Give me the Chargers minus one. I like the Chargers defense so far. The Browns defense is more middle of the pack compared to elite last year, and they've struggled to stop the run against teams that run the ball at a high clip. Against the Eagles, they gave up plus 100 yards. Against the Commanders, they gave up quite a few rushing touchdowns. And then the Baltimore Ravens, where they pretty much gave up about six yards per carry. I think the Chargers and this run game, especially with the stout offensive line that they have, I like the Chargers to beat the Browns by one point. So give me the LA Chargers minus one. New Orleans Saints versus the Carolina Panthers. The Saints are seven-point favorites. I think this is also due to the fact that not only the Panthers are bad, but I do think that Derek Carr comes back in this game. Don't know if I trust giving the Saints a minus seven since there are since they are on a six game losing streak. I think that's a bit too rich for me. I'm gonna tease this down from a seven to a four, and my parlay will be with the Cincinnati Bengals minus four and New Orleans Saints minus four. I'll put the odds down in the parentheses, but that is my teaser parlay that I have. Cincinnati Bengals minus four. I think it's I think seven's too rich for the Bengals for that are winless at home. And then seven to four for the Saints. Six game losing streak. Don't know if I feel comfortable giving them that touchdown spread. Give me those two teams at minus four parlay. New England Patriots versus the Tennessee Titans. The Patriots got a nice win against the New York Jets, and the Tennessee Titans got blown out by the Detroit Lions. I'm going to choose the Patriots at plus three and a half. I'm going to ride this trend for a bit, but pretty much no team has won a game the following week playing the Detroit Lions. And teams that have played the Detroit Lions and lost the following week, there are also favorites the following week. The Titans are favored in this game. I'm going to ride that trend until someone breaks it. So give me the Patriots plus three and a half. Just don't like that little scary Lions hangover trend that the Titans are now a part of right now. Give me the Patriots plus three and a half to cover. Jacksonville Jaguars versus the Philadelphia Eagles. The spread is at minus seven and a half. Close game in the first half. I'll gladly take the minus seven and a half. Up in the air if Brian Thomas... Junior will play. I think Christian Kirk is out for some time with his collarbone, but this is a talent mismatch. You have a playoff Super Bowl contending team versus one of the worst teams in the NFL. Do not see this being a trap game, and I think the Eagles take care of business here. Give me the Eagles minus seven and a half. Chicago Bears versus the Arizona Cardinals. Right now, the spread is about one and a half. I'm going to take the Arizona Cardinals at minus one and a half. The Cardinals got a nice victory against the Miami Dolphins, and they finally won back-to-back -back games in quite some time. Right now, the Bears have not won a game on the road, and if you look at their schedule, they're pretty much a team right now that only beat subpar teams and can only win at home until the Bears can win on the road, and they've yet to beat a team at 500 or more. Carol, uh, Arizona Cardinals are at 500, so give me the Arizona Cardinals minus one and a half. I need to see a little bit of this Browns team to get a W on the road and at least be a nice quality team. So give me the Cardinals minus one and a half. Detroit Lions versus the Green Bay Packers classic divisional matchup. Right now, the spread is at three. Anything can happen in a divisional game. They have yet to rule out Jordan Love, so there's a possibility that he could be in this game. Look, the Lions blew out the Dallas Cowboys. The Lions blew out the Tennessee Titans. The Green Bay Packers defense isn't like the Cowboys. It isn't like the Tennessee Titans. And the Packers are a better team than the Cowboys or the Titans. So I don't think there will be a blowout in this situation. Um, I don't like the three spread because sometimes something feels a little bit weird here. I'm going to do a teaser spread on this game. I'm going to tease up the Green Bay Packers from a three and tease it up to a plus nine. I'm going to parlay that with the Dallas Cowboys plus nine and a half. So Dallas Cowboys plus nine and a half parlayed with the Green Bay Packers plus nine. They have yet to rule out Jordan Love, but even if they do roll out Jordan Love, I think Matt LaFleur can cook with Malik Willis and we don't know what's in their bag. That can happen against the Lions. Don't see a blowout, but I like the Packers and this divisional game to be closer than what people think. Give me the parlay. 
Cowboys plus nine and a half, and the Green Bay Packers plus nine. LA Rams versus the Seattle Seahawks. Right now, this game is at a one. This game could potentially end in a, end in a tie. Nice divisional matchup between these two. Um, I'm going to give the edge to the LA Rams minus one. The Seahawks, I need more quality wins out of the Seahawks team. They got pretty much blown out by the Bills, um, but they beat in teams in like Broncos, Bo Nix's first game. I think they, they defeated the Patriots. They defeated the Tuolis. Uh, Miami Dolphins and the Atlanta Falcons, who bit kind of surprising a little bit, but I like the Rams in this game. I think by them having Puka Nakua and Cooper Cup being back, it made this offense very explosive. And I really like the Rams in this divisional game, especially from the coaching perspective. I give Sean McVay the coaching advantage over Coach McDonald. Give me the LA Rams minus one. Indianapolis Colts versus the Minnesota Vikings. Right now, the spread is at five. The Vikings are on a two-game losing streak, and the Colts are moving forward with Joe Flacco. This is the way I see it. Either the Vikings come into this game very motivated and blow out the Indianapolis Colts, or we see the downhill of the Vikings. They potentially lose, or this game's a lot close. The Colts have a very solid offensive line. I feel like if they give Joe Flacco some time in the pocket, I think he could shred the secondary. I'll be very honest. Um, the five is really weird. Um, so I'm probably going to have to, I'm going to do a parlay. I'm going to do a parlay teaser. I'm going to tease up the Colts to a plus eight. Uh, the reason being is I kind of believe that Joe Flacco can shred the secondary if he's given time. Um, if this was Anthony Richardson, I would definitely slam the minus five for the Vikings, but I think Joe Flacco gives his Colts team a chance. Um, and as like a veteran in the pocket, give him enough time. I think he can take advantage of this Vikings defense. So I'm going to tease up the Colts to a plus eight for this matchup. Tampa Bay Buccaneers and the Kansas City Chiefs. Right now, the spread's at nine. I understand a lot of people going to the Chiefs because the Buccaneers do not have Mike Evans or Chris Godwin. But you have to realize that the Buccaneers are actually one of the best teams to cover as underdogs. The Chiefs, yes, they got DeAndre Hopkins, but they have yet to be a team with the spread. Don't know if I trust this line of nine for the Chiefs who have yet to really blow out a team. Do I think they could blow out the Buccaneers? Of course, we saw what Kirk, what Kirk Cousins did to this defense, and Baker Mayfield has a very aggressive aerial attack type style in which the Chiefs can take advantage of it. I don't like the nine. This seems a game where the, the Chiefs are probably up by two touchdowns. And Baker Mayfield scores a late touchdown, and the nine is done. So I'm going to tease this game for the Chiefs. I'm going to tease it down from a minus nine to a minus six. I trust the Chiefs to beat this Buccaneers by at least two field goals who do not have two of their superstar receivers than I do at a nine, which is pretty scary. But I'm going to tease this Chiefs game from a minus nine to a minus six and parlaying it with the Indianapolis Colts. So it will be Colts plus eight parlayed with a Chiefs minus six. That will be my third teaser parlay for this video. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed the content, please give the video a thumbs up and comment below on your week nine spread picks. Thank you so much and catch you guys next week.